they're healthy. And a lot of them, I would say, aren't too worried about what other people think. For example, working out in the street, not like in the actual street, but like on the sidewalk, is a common thing that I saw. You know, you'd see an older person, you know, waiting for a light, and instead of just standing there waiting, they, they're doing push-ups on a bench. And I was just like, well, okay, like, I'll join you next time. Um, so they're very healthy. They have a lot of those type of parks where you can work out at. I know that's stereotypical. The, a lot of people think oh, Asians, oh, they're smart at math and science. And it's true. And I think it's because their schooling trains them to get the right answer. Calculators, I'm sure they wish they could use them, but they don't. I mean, even like elementary, middle school, like you have these complex problems and you're doing it on paper and in your head and so one time I got to help a girl who I was home teaching her or not home teaching I was teaching her uncle but then teaching them English at the same time and one day I just realized she was very like worried about something and busy and I was like well what is it can I help and she goes pulls over her math book and I look at it and I go, I can do math, but this is in Korean. Let me see what I can do and I'm walking through it and then finally she goes, oh, you're too slow and then just does it. I was like, oh, I guess I gave you the motivation to get it done, right? So they're very good at that. As far as education, they like to go to school and it's not like public schools here where you go to school and you get home and you mess around for an hour or two, do a little bit of homework, and then you go hang out with more friends or family. Um, it's you go to school, then after school, you go to academies that are teaching uh, martial arts, music, more math, magic, you know, and you go and you learn more and more. And I, I knew kids who would go to school early in the morning, like six or seven, they're at school. And then they'd get home at about 10 at night. You know, and, that was, and they were doing stuff the whole time, just scheduled out. So like, I think that's where a lot of their work ethic comes from because they're just forced to do so much. They're always wearing their uniforms, which is funny because you can, tell what grade or what school people go to because they're walking down the street with all their friends and they're all wearing the exact same thing. And they all have their names like embroidered right here. And so you have your missionary name tag and they have their names and you're walking by and you're like, oh, that kid looks like he's a, the cool kid of the crowd. And I just like say the name, I was like, oh, how are you doing? And they're like, I don't know you. And then they notice my name tag and they're like, oh, I'm doing good, so-and-so. And the people are like, oh, you know these white people? Like, let's go talk to them as a group. So they stick together as far as uh, their age groups go. And yeah, Koreans are probably also the nicest people I've met. I feel like sometimes if people are learning English, uh, other people aren't as nice to them. And if they don't speak it well enough, they're like, come on, learn English. You, you know, you're in America. But when you're going over there and you're learning Korean, and it's, it's not an easy language. It's difficult, um, but achievable. And the people there are so kind, they want to help you learn Korean. They, they see you're struggling and they probably understand what you're trying to say. And they'll maybe help you out with some words or you bring around a little notebook with words that you're trying to learn and you use it to, uh, to try and get a conversation started about the church. You're like, oh, will you help me pronounce this word right here? And they're like, oh, you say it like this. And then you're like, oh, okay. And then you pretend like you go back to studying. And they see another word on there. It's like missionary or church or something like that. Or, and they're like, so uh, why are you learning Korean? Oh, actually, I'm glad you asked. Let me put this away. This is really why I want to get you to help me with that. Um, but they're super kind. 
hardworking, like I said. They're very open to the spirit. They're very in tune with it, I would say. And a lot of them can feel it and they notice a difference when you're talking with them and when you're not there. There's not really a personal space balance. Uh, people can be right up next to you and still be fine. They had very good public transportation. And, you know, sometimes you just didn't want to get on the subway in the morning because everyone was going to work. And as a missionary, you feel a little uncomfortable just being up against everyone else. And we always carried around our Book of Mormon. And so I'm just holding Book of Mormon. And I'm like, man, I uh, really hope that not a lot of people get on and more people get on the subway and you just kind of crowd in. and So there's no personal space, really. They have two really great holidays. There's one called Chusuk, which is about uh, comparative to Thanksgiving. It's their harvest one. And Solar, which is more February time frame. Um, and that is New Year's. You go and see your family for that. There's a part where you, you bow a specific way. You get on this knee and then that knee. And you bow down with your hands like on the ground. And then your elders or your uncle or something, they pay you money for your bow. You eat a lot of really good food around that time. Those two are probably the biggest. 